Greetings, one and all, and welcome to episode number 41 of Thoughts and Hunches, Making Money in Bunches and Sucker Punches. Your boy Stoney is back for the 41st time, and I'd like to welcome all of my fellow hoodlums, lowlifes, hustlers, scumbags, fienders, degenerates. You're all back for season two, episode eight, the birthday version. That's right, it's your boy's birthday today. I'm selling 25, I don't think anyone's going to buy it, but I don't really give a shit these days. I'm 25 years old, deal with it. But one thing I can say for sure is I continue to deliver W's right in your laps every single week. Another big week last week. The numbers are just, you know, I mean... Are you surprised anymore? You shouldn't be. Last week, NCAA 9-5. and five. And NFL 8-3. and 17-8 and eight overall, right, in football. That's just stupid good. 17-8. and eight. Yes. Another week that just, you know, uh, confounds, right? We're over 67% last week, right? And baseball... Right, I gave you two picks on Saturday, and I split those, right? But I gave you both of the series prices. Houston is one win away. I'm watching Houston right now. They win tonight. That's another winner for Stoney. I had Atlanta, another big winner. They're up three games to two. They can end it tomorrow. Anyway. We'll come back to all that. Anyway, the bottom line is the numbers are staggering right now. NCA nine and five last week, fifty nine and forty seven now on the season. That's fifty five point six six percent, which is phenomenal considering where we began the first two weeks. The la we've now ripped off five consecutive winning weeks in college football. That's just going to continue this week. NFL. After three straight rough weeks where we were either below 500 or at 500, eight and three last week, top notch, 44, 44 wins, 26 losses on the season for the NFL. That's 62.86%. Phenomenal. That means overall we're 103 wins, 73 losses, 58.52%, right where we need to be. Yeah, Cruz, I said right where we need to be. We're going to continue rolling. Before we get to the picks, my thoughts real quick. We're going to start with Major League, or actually all I'm going to talk about is Major League Baseball as far as my thoughts. Um, too much NFL. Just get it out of your minds, right? And college football, we'll get there, but not this, but not this week. Right now it's baseball. Here's the thing. Here's, here's what I'm posing, the question that I'm posing to you. The Los Angeles Dodgers, right? They beat the Giants last week, beat my Giants. Yeah, we all know. We saw it. Wow, what a phenomenal five-game series, right? But you got to credit the Giants in completely wearing out the Dodgers because come NLCS time, they were toast. Their arms were dead. Their starting arms, their bullpen wasn't up to the task. They had to do two bullpen games in the first five games of the series. Games one and five, they had bullpen games. What the hell's going on here, right? Dave Roberts. Everybody loves Dave Roberts. Anybody who's met Dave Roberts, all the talking heads that you listen to on the radio or see on TV, they love Dave Roberts. He's one of the greatest guys in the world, just like uh, Dusty Baker, another great guy. But when does Dave, Dave Roberts, when is he going to be taken to task for completely blowing this in, entire NLCS? I mean, let's face it, they won last night. Dodgers won game five, and we'll give them that, right? Three games to two, and they did it with another bullpen game, but they won it this time. They lost the first bullpen game. Now, outside of Clay Bellinger's miracle home run in game three, a case could be made the Dodgers should have been swept. That's how good Atlanta was in the first four games. Dominant, right? They made one mistake. Bellinger hit the home run. Dodgers capitalized. Give them credit, right? Got him back in the series at 2-1. Then they lost again, make it 3-1. Then they won, now it's 3-2. Well, they got two games left, and yeah, oh, wow, well, well, they've got Scherzer going tomorrow, and they've got uh, Bueller in Game 7 if necessary, and the Braves are known for choking, and this and that. Okay, the Braves are known for choking. What are the Dodgers known for? 
nine, eight, eight straight National League Western Championships, five trips to the NLCS, thir three, four trips to the World Series, one world title in a strike short, or in, excuse me, in a sham shortened season. The only World Series they uh, title that they have is only recognized by people in L.A.? How's this possible, all right? With all the talent, and they're outspending everybody. They're the Yankees of today, but nobody wants to talk about that. How they blow everybody away in, in spending, right? $260 million? $70 million this year for Clayton Kershaw and Trevor Bauer. Neither one of them playing at this moment. But they're not called to task for any of this, right? At what point, if the Braves win this series... That's the last eight years a case could be made, well, a very serious case he made. The Dodgers have been the best team in baseball for the last eight years, but with one title. What does that remind you of? The Atlanta Braves of the 90s. What are the Atlanta Braves of the 90s known for? Not winning the big one. How come the Dodgers of the 2010s aren't known for that? They should be. They should be known for not getting it done when it counts. Okay, yeah, they beat the Dodgers and every oh my God, Max, Max Scherzer, what a warrior! He came out of the bullpen and he was unbelievable. In Game Two of the NLCS, my arm was dead, is what Scherzer said. Okay, your arm's dead. Well, we'll see what you got tomorrow night because you better bring it tomorrow night. Atlanta's back home, and Atlanta ain't taking no prisoners. This is not the same Atlanta team from last year. A lot can happen between <laughs> between them. But anyway, I just want to say, at what point do we call the Dodgers the chokers that they are? At some point, that, that's got to be said. And Dave Roberts has to be taken a task for it. But nobody wants to talk about it. But I just did. All right, there you go. There you got it. For all you people in La La Land flying your Fugazi championship from last year, please give it a rest. All right, that's it. That's enough on my tirade for the week. Let's move on to the picks. NCAA picks starting tomorrow, uh, Saturday, October 23rd, the day after your boy's birthday. NCAA 9-5 and five last week. We're on a roll. We're back up to 55%. You know we're going to end up 58-59% in college football, which is just fantastic after two miserable weeks to start the season. But anyway, it's now five straight winning weeks. Anyway, here we go. NCAA football starting at noon Eastern. All times are Eastern. That's what we're going with. Noon Eastern time. Sixth-ranked Michigan at home in the big house. In Ann Arbor, 23.5 point shock against the Wildcats in Northwestern. Northwestern won last week over Rutgers to get to 3-3. Three and three, And they're not a bad team. Rutgers actually, or Rutgers, Northwestern's actually not that bad of a team. The thing about Michigan, right? They're 6-0, and oh, right? A lot of blowouts. Uh, two weeks ago they won but didn't cover over Nebraska. And that was like kind of the only... I don't want to say kink in their armor, but it was, you know, and that's, but they didn't cover, but they have been all before that. And Michigan, I'm going to, I'm going to lay the points period. It's just 23 and a half and, uh, 23 and a half. I'm going to lay them. I'm going to lay them all day long and I'm going to take the Wolverines. That's game one. Moving on. We're going to stay in the big 10. <clears throat> Illinois heads over to Penn State, University Park, Pennsylvania. Penn State, uh, the number seven seeded, number seventh ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. Also, this game's at noon also. Uh, they're ranked seventh. They're 23 and a half point favorites. Two games, 23 and a half in the Big Ten. We're going to take the favorites both ways, period. Illinois is two and four. They were shut out two weeks ago by Wisconsin, who's not a very good team. Illinois doesn't have any statement wins. Their biggest win was back in week one against Nebraska. <clears throat> Penn State's five and one. Their only loss was to Iowa two weeks ago. Uh, they got wins over Indiana and Auburn. Penn State's a team. Penn State's at home. They're going to handle Illinois. They're going to go right through them. Lay the lumber. 12.30 p.m. Blacksburg, Virginia, ACC matchup. Virginia Tech, minus three against Syracuse. 
This one's going to be a good matchup. Syracuse three and four. Vatek is three and three. Syracuse is three and four, but they've lost three in a row. They're two bad teams. Virginia Tech's three and three. They've lost three out of four. So neither team's playing very well. But Virginia Tech has played well against better competition lately than Syracuse has. We're going to take Virginia Tech. Uh, lay the points at home, minus three. That's three, three straight favorites to kick off the day. 3 p.m. West Lafayette, back to the Big Ten, Purdue, Wisconsin. The 25th ranked Purdue Boilermakers are three and a half point dogs against Wisconsin. <clears throat> the Badgers come in three and a half point favorites. They're three and three, Wisconsin is, but they literally do not have any good wins. Not one, period. All right. Last week they uh, uh, they won twenty to fourteen, but they didn't cover the Army. They were seventeen point favorites. They only won by six. Uh, Wisconsin's offense is just putrid right now. Purdue uh, last week, their I mean, was their statement win. Purdue is now in the top twenty five. They're four and two. And last week, their statement win was a blowout. In Iowa City, they blew out at the time number two ranked Iowa, and uh, Purdue is three and a half point dogs. We're going to take the points, and at home, I still don't understand how Wisconsin's favored, but we're going to take the Boilermakers plus three and a half. Three thirty p.m. at the Big Ketchup Bottle in Pittsburgh, the twenty third ranked Pittsburgh Panthers. Yes, I said the twenty third ranked Panthers. They're three and a half point shock against Clemson. Clemson's four and two. They have losses to Georgia and NC State. There's no harm in that. But the problem Clemson has is they just can't score. Period. Pitt is now five and one with a questionable loss to Western to Western Michigan. But that was a while ago, right? <clears throat> they score a lot and they've been <clears throat> excuse me and they've been posting blowouts the last couple of weeks. So we're gonna take Pitt minus three and a half in a statement game for them and a statement loss for uh, Clemson, which will really bury him. Take Pitt, lay the three and a half at the ketchup bottle. 3.30 p.m., Oklahoma State versus Iowa State. This is a good matchup in Ames. Uh, Iowa State comes in seven-point favorites. They were the toast of the, of the Big 12 to start the season, but they fell on hard times to start the season, but now they've won three out of four wins over Iowa and Baylor. Pretty impressive. Uh, or, I'm sorry, losses to Iowa and Baylor. Uh, but they have won three out of four. Uh, Oklahoma State, on the other hand, is 6-0. and They're ranked eighth in the nation, and nobody is giving this team love. The last four weeks, they've beaten Boise State, Kansas State, Baylor, and last week's epic comeback against Texas to knock them off. Oklahoma State is the play here. They're seven-point dogs somehow. You know, uh, everybody seems to be all over Iowa State's nuts again, but... You know, maybe they can finish the season strong and somehow sneak into a major bowl, but not the uh, playoffs or anything. Oklahoma State's playing for a shot in the college football playoff right now. They're seven-point dogs. I'm not saying Oklahoma State's going to win, but they can definitely cover this because Oklahoma State has been winning and covering ugly all season long. It's just one thing that they do. So we're going to take the Cowboys plus the seven on the road. 3.30 p.m., Minnesota, Maryland. This game's in Stoneyapolis, Minnesota. The Gophers are four and a half point chalk at home against the uh, Terps of Maryland. Maryland. Both teams are four and two. This, you know, another Big Ten matchup with <clears throat> with a couple of under the radar good good football teams. Maryland's four and two. They got off to a, a hot four and zero start, but the last two weeks they lost to Iowa and Ohio State. No harm in that, but they have lost two straight now. Minnesota, the last two weeks, has beaten Purdue and Nebraska to get to four and two after they struggled to start the season. So Minnesota has been playing a lot better. Tanner Morgan's getting uh, the offense together from PJ Fleck, and he's starting to understand it more. We're going to take the Golden Gophers. We're going to lay the four and a half at home. 3.30 p.m., Pullman, Washington. BYU minus four at Washington State. <clears throat> I love BYU in this matchup, you know, for all the right reasons. Uh, excuse me. Washington State, uh, they've won three in a row somehow, some way, right? Uh, Cal, Oregon State, and uh, Stanford, right? And... Uh, 
Washington State was getting everything together until they fired Nick Rolovich because he refused to get vaccinated. They fired all of his assistants. Uh, Washington State's a mess right now. BYU's 5-2, and two and they've lost two in a row, but they lost to Boise and Baylor, right? A couple of really good teams. Uh, but they are 3-0 and against the Pac-12 this year. Another Pac-12 matchup against a team decimated. Their, their, their coaching staff is all turned over. Take BYU, lay the four, go Cougs. 3.30 p.m., Oxford, Mississippi at the Grove. 12th ranked Ole Miss. Nine point chalk over the bumbling Bengal Tigers of LSU. Ole Miss, period. You know, I mean, I'm going to be in attendance, all right? This is my birthday present to myself. I'm taking the old lady. We're going to head down. We're going to have a blast. We're going to be at the Grove. We're going to be partying. We're going to be wearing red and blue. We're going to be yelling holly toddy and laughing at all of you redneck Cajuns coming up from the swamps. Ole Miss, nine-point favorites. Their only loss was to Alabama. The last two weeks, they have beaten Tennessee and Arkansas, even though that, the ending of that Tennessee game was just, ugh, it was ugly. LSU is 4-3. and three. Uh, They did get a win over Florida last week where their offense just could not be stopped. They just kept scoring and scoring and scoring on one inexplicable weekend that Florida decided not to play any defense. Right, But... LSU also has three losses. They lost to Kentucky. They lost to Auburn. And who else did they lose to? Let me see. Oh, that's right. They lost to my Bruins. My UCLA Bruins beat LSU. So, you know, I mean, it all comes down to one simple question. Are you going to take the Tigers? You know the answer. No. No Tigers. Take the Rebels. Lay the nine. I'll be in the Grove tomorrow. 4 p.m. <clears throat> ACC matchup. Right up the road about three hours in Louisville. Louisville minus five and a half against Boston College. This is another good matchup. Louisville's only three and three. Boston College is four and two. Uh, last two weeks, Boston College has now uh, lost to Clemson and to North Carolina State, where uh, Louisville last two weeks has lost to Wake and Virginia, right? So th they were three and one. BC was four and oh, right? So both teams are trying to level it out. I like Louisville at home. They're a much more balanced team than Boston College is. We're gonna, I'm going to take the cards, lay the five and a half. 7 p.m., Ruston, Louisiana. Yep, not, it's not every day I'm taking games from Ruston. But uh, Louisiana Tech is home dogs, six and a half point home dogs to the 24th ranked Roadrunners of UTSA. That's right. University of Texas San Antonio has been a damn covering machine lately. They've covered five out of six. They're seven and zero, oh, and yeah, they're ranked twenty fourth in the nation. La Tech is two and four. They've dropped three out of four. They're not playing well at all. Take the Road Runners. Lay the six and a half. This one should be pretty easy. Pac twelve or Pac twelve. Sorry, Mountain West matchup seven p.m. from Colorado Springs. 22nd ranked San Diego State, Las, Los Aztecas, head in to the academy to take on Air Force. Air Force is 6-1 and one and getting no love. They're getting absolutely no, no love. Yes, they did lose to Utah State, but that was a month ago. Since then, they've been rolling. They run the ball. You know how the academy does it. You know, it's it's how they pile up all those yards. Well, San Diego State is 6-0. and oh. They had a very tough win last week over San Jose State, which they didn't cover, but they did win, right? And they're balanced. And San Diego State has a couple of big wins on their resume. They're going to continue, and I'm going to take San Diego State outright, plus the three at the academy, even though the Sharps are on uh, the academy right now. I like the Aztecs. Take the three. Take them on the money line. 7.30 p.m. at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami and South Florida. NC State, the 18th ranked Wolfpack come in as three and a half road shock to take on the disaster that has become the Miami Hurricanes. The Canes are two and four. The last two weeks they've lost to North Carolina and Virginia. Their only good win this this season was App Appalachian State. And I mean, is that really a good win? It's an okay win, but they haven't won in conference. NC State five and one on the other hand. Uh the last four weeks they've just been cruising, period. Uh 
uh, quarterback Devin Leary right now is just getting it done. He's really taking his game to the next level. And I don't even think this one's going to be close. Manny Diaz in trouble. NC State, uh, his, his, his job's on the hot seat. NC State minus three and a half on the road. Lock it in, period. 7.30 p.m., Bloomington, Indiana. Fifth-ranked Ohio State comes in as 21-point shock to against the Hoosiers. Ohio State, they're 5-1. and one. Their only loss was to Oregon. They've won four straight. They've covered four straight, and they're blasting teams. They're blowing everybody out because everyone's forgotten about Ohio State since that loss to Oregon. Indiana came in with all the hype, and... Uh, they they just haven't delivered at all this season. They're two and four. They've lost three out of four, and they're just they keep getting in their own way. And Ohio State is twenty one point favorite. We're gonna lay them just like we did last week. Ohio State wins this one easily. Seven thirty p.m. Pac twelve matchup. Utah three point chalk on the road in Corvallis against Oregon State. Two four and two teams in the Pac twelve that nobody wants to talk about because they're not glamour programs. They're not USC. You know they're they're not Oregon right, but they're Oregon State and they're Utah and their schools right now that are winning. Oregon State's 4 and 2. They've won 4 in a row after an 0 and 2 start. Or uh I'm sorry. Uh the uh, last week Washington State, right? That was not a good look. That was not a good look at all for Oregon State. Utah on the other hand is 4 and 2. Uh last 3 weeks have all been blowouts. They're starting to get their feet uh, going from underneath them. Utah is rolling. They're playing their best ball right now. As three-point chalk on the road in Corvallis, I'm going to take the Utes and lay the three. Last two games, 7.30 p.m., 13th-ranked Notre Dame, seven-point favorites against USC in front of Touchdown Jesus and South Bend. Another classic matchup, uh, classic rivalry. Uh USC's three and three. They're a mess right now. Period. They have losses to Oregon State and Stanford. Notre Dame's five and one. Their only loss was to Cincinnati, who's now ranked second in the nation. Here's the thing: in in this series, which goes on every year, this this matchup, the last ten games in this series, Notre Dame's won seven out of ten, including the last three. It's not going to change this time. Take Notre Dame, lay the seven. USC's a mess. Irish roll and make it look easy. And finally, the degenerate special. Yes, our eighth this degenerate special of the season. We started out 0 and 4. We're now 3 and 4. Yes, that's three in a row for all you math majors. Three in a row constitutes a streak. There are people out there that love, love the degenerate special because they're degenerates. I have one guy who will go unmentioned. He lives in South Florida and he's Irish and he has a beard, a ZZ Top beard down to here. Anyway, we won't mention any names. He play, he bets one game a week and it's the degenerate special. He wasn't a, he wasn't a big fan of mine after week four. But now week seven, he's singing my praises like everyone else does. Anyway, uh, he's won three in a row. He's thrilled. He loves it. He goes nuts. Degenerate special this week. It's got to be Hawaii, right? Midnight Eastern. (laughs) Midnight Eastern. Yes, 9 p.m. for all you West Coast folks. 11 o'clock for me in the Central Time Zone. This is just insane. Midnight Eastern in Stony Lulu. Oahu, Hawaii, Hawaii, the Rainbow Warriors are 18 point favorites against New Mexico State, the Aggies. Hawaii's not great. They're three and four, but they have won two out of three. Well, they had one two in a row until they lost last week, right? But uh, New Mexico State is one of the worst teams in division one football period they're one and six they've lost three straight and these two teams met last month now you got to remember this is how the WAC conference and all these conferences go they're starting to get uh with covid and travel restrictions and this and that there are teams that got to play each other twice well they these two teams met last month in las cruces and Hawaii came onto the mainland and blew them out 41-21. And that doesn't happen very often with the uh, Rainbow Warriors. But they're back home, 
And you know the drill. The old adage is take Hawaii at home because the teams from the mainland that come in, they party too much and they're not ready to play. Take Hawaii, lay the 18. That's your degenerate special. That's 17 NCAA picks for that ass. 17. Biggest number of the year, 17. All right, we're planning on eleven and six this week. Ten and seven wouldn't suck, but eleven and six is what we're shooting for. Still one nothing Houston, uh, bottom three. Anyway, okay, NFL action Sunday. Here we go. You ready for this? Green Bay minus eight over Washington. Easy, easy peasy. We're not going to get into much discussion. We're just going to rapid fire these. Green Bay take the pack, lay the eight. Atlanta. Minus two and a half at Miami. Take the Falcons. That one should be easy. New York Giants plus three at home against Carolina. Carolina's struggling. They're not playing well. The Giants aren't either, but this is the Giants' shot. Take the three points. Baltimore, minus six and a half against Carolina. Uh, excuse me, against Cincinnati. Cincinnati's four and two. They're playing well. Joe Burrow has found his footing, but Baltimore right now. Man, I don't see how Cincinnati can slow down Lamar. Baltimore lay the six and a half at home. I'm going to take Detroit plus 16 and a half on the road against the Rams. Yes, I'm taking Detroit. This game could end 40 to nothing Rams very easily. Rams are 5 and 1. Detroit's 0 and 6. But 16 and a half, you're going to give me 16 and a half points? I'll take them, period. Revenge game, Jared Goff. Moving on. Houston plus 17 and a half. I'll take Houston on the road against the only undefeated team in the NFL in Arizona. Arizona 17 and a half points. They're going to have to win this game by three touchdowns. They could. They probably will. But I don't think so. I'm taking Houston plus the 17 and a half. Tampa Bay minus 12 at home against the Bears. This one has mismatch written all over it. The oldest quarter, the biggest age disparity in quarterbacks in NFL history with Brady at 44 and Justin Fields at 21. It's incredible. Uh, anyway, the Bears are a mess. Uh, they are improving a little bit, but Tampa Bay's offense is just too damn good. Tampa Bay take the, uh, excuse me, take the Bucks, lay the 12. Indiana plus Indiana, Indianapolis plus four at San Francisco. 49ers are two and three. They're coming off their bye week, which usually helps. They're getting Jimmy Garoppolo back. But Indianapolis has been playing well quietly. They're two and four, and nobody wants to talk about Carson Wentz. He's the big elephant in the room that nobody wants to give props to because you give props to Carson Wentz. It's a bad thing. Anyway, Indianapolis plus the four. I like the Colts on the road. Uh, Sunday night, New Orleans. All right, excuse me, that was the Sunday night game, Indianapolis, San Francisco. Finally, Monday night, New Orleans, Seattle. This one is in Seattle, in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to take the Saints, lay the four and a half, and uh, see what happens. Seattle played well last week in their first week without, without Russell Wilson. It's not going to keep happening. New Orleans isn't a very good team, but right now Seattle ain't a very good team. So I'm going to take the Saints, lay the four and a half. There's your nine NFL plays. How's that? That's 26 plays. Boom, 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 just like that. All right? And the way I'm rolling, man, you know, it'd be hard to fade me or go against me, right, LSU fans? Finally, NLCS game six tomorrow, Atlanta plus 155 against the Dodgers. I'm going to take Atlanta. I had the Dodgers once in this series, and it was last night and when they won because that was the cheapest value you could get the Dodgers at. I've been taking Atlanta because Atlanta, that Atlanta's where the value is. I told you this last week. When I told you to take Atlanta in the series, if you take the Dodgers, you're not making any money, right? You have to bet a fortune just to win if the Dodgers win, right? But on the other hand, you don't have to bet much to get paid with Atlanta. I had Atlanta plus 182 for the series price. They're one win away from making that happen. Houston, minus 146. I took Houston at minus 146, and I'm six innings away from cashing that ticket. So all I do is just continue to cash tickets. Take the take the Atlanta Braves tomorrow in game six, and uh, we'll see what happens because uh, next week it'll be World Series time. So anyway, there's your plays. 27 plays on the week, 26 football, one baseball. It's what we do. We continue to drop them in your laps. Again, 
your boy on his birthday, going to the Grove this weekend. Expect to have a freaking blast down there. Oxford, oh God, it's awesome. It's one of the best places to go to. Uh, Saturdays in the South, family, faith, football. It's what they believe in, and I'm going to be there in the middle of it, going to a huge tailgate. Looking forward to it. Anyway, here's the motto. Don't forget it, that if you want to win big, you got to bet big. To me, the action is the juice. There's money on the streets that can't be ignored. And finally, good luck to you.